Dr. Dimming always started his seminars with basically three reasons why we're here. So those of you that ever were at a Dr. Dimming seminar, maybe you can help me out. So anybody tell me one? To have fun, to learn something, and to make a difference, right? To have fun, to learn something, and to make a difference. And it turns out that, gee, those three things are brain compatible. <laughs> you change a system so people are learning, having fun, you, you get performance results. When people are making a difference, they're going deep into reasoning far beyond just getting a test score. They're actually thinking about how do I not only change my life, how do I change the world? We have to start to let go of a lot of the things that are happening now if you want to move into some place totally different. Uh, you know, Einstein has that concept that if you keep on doing the same thing, you're going to keep on getting the same result. And you can't get a different result by working harder at the current system. So you have to have new knowledge, new way to think about, hmm, what are we going to do? How are we going to transform that system? Do something different with that. Well, the different, the secret sauce that uh, I got from all this was not about creating students that just go out and make money. In fact, Deming was very cr uh, clear, this is about a transformation of the individual. Uh, are we just producing people to pass tests and get better test scores? Or are we trying to t produce a system where pe people are taught to think differently? And what you saw in the film are students that started to think. They started to think about their own environment. They started to think about how do I manage myself and how can I expand that circle of influence so now I can affect the community or I can affect the state. And that kind of thinking, when we brought that back to our school, had a massive change in behavior and the way people thought about why are they in school. So Dr. Deming often said, uh, it's not enough just to work hard. You have to know what to do and then work hard. Same thing goes for money. You know, if suddenly you got all the money possible, what would you do with it? Would you actually know how to make a significant change or would you just buy more iPads? How do you improve quality? Get rid of the bad ones. Isn't that the prevailing common sense we have in America right now, we had a dropout, high school dropout rate of 35% for the last 35, 40 years. It hasn't changed much. Because we have a prevailing theory, <laughs> improve quality, ah, get rid of the bad ones. So we did that. After the first school year, we had sent home 42% of the population. When you get a new hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. <laughs> and you know what? After we sent home 42% of the population, amazingly, we still had a bottom 10%. <laughs> How does that work? You know, what are you going to do then? Now, you just think for a second, if you follow that theory to its nth degree, right? You keep sending home the bottom 10% all the time. Pretty soon, you're going to be left with only two students in your school. Statistically, one of them has to be below average. <laughs> Some of you are working that out. <laughs> you send that one below average home, or you get rid of them, do something to them, you're just left with one student in your school, and they're just statistically average. Okay, thinking. So those of you that are you know, trying to improve quality by you know, sending people to detention, you know, calling people's parents, doing all kinds of things like that. It's basically the same theory at work. The most amazing thing, if nothing else, you start to realize this, the dimming thinking, is a different theory. It's a different way to operate, to think about performance and what you do. And uh, dimming was a champion of the individual. He would go into companies, and he would just berate management, <laughs> but he loved the workers. He loved the people in the organization. And uh, he was amazingly, I heard him say things like, uh, people have a right to joy in their work. I never heard that before. 
We were being rated and ranked to death. We were being evaluated by our administrators, told what a bad job we were doing. Nobody ever came and said, oh, you have a right to join your work. <laughs> really? Well, students have a right to join their learning. And if that's not happening, something's wrong. <laughs> You gotta stop doing this and start doing something else. They have a right to joy in their learning. So Deming talked a lot about moving from extrinsic motivation systems to intrinsic motivation systems. And well, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, it turns out that that's brain compatible. But that's one of the core things in your learning code if you're not having intrinsic motivation happening, you don't have any motivation. See, you have to actually uncover that. Uh, why do extrinsic motivators work? Hmm. Because they have to. See, if I, if I paid you a certain amount to slug the person next to you, at what point would that be worth it? Some of you might do it for 50 cents. <laughs> you know? $500 do it, 1,000? What, what would you do to do that? We have the same thing going on now, race to the top. I met with one uh, group that was responsible for the application for race to the top, and we I tried fervently to explain to them how disastrous <laughs> it was going to be in their state, and they said, we know, we know, we know it's wrong, but we're not gonna give up on $400 million. How do, you, how do you change the system? What do you, what do, you do about this, you know? Here we are caught in this situation. Starting to understand the interrelationship of parts to the whole. That's systems thinking, okay? How do, think, how do, how do we work together in a whole different standpoint? Understanding you can't just change one part of the system without understanding the, the effects it has on the rest of the system. Um, you know, I see people changing things all the time. <laughs> they just come in, oh, change this and change that. The average superintendent in the United States is only in office about 14 months now. People not knowing what to do, but you know, their heart is good and they're trying to do stuff, but they don't understand the systems and, system and understand how to do that.